Okay. Um, and it's also my great, tremendous pleasure to present the President's Award. So the President's Award for Lifetime Achievement is given to a person who has made outstanding and sustained contributions to the field over the course of many years. The recipient is selected by the three presidents of the society, president, president-elect, and past president. And the interval between presentations of this award must be at least three years. It's unspecified what the terminal end is, um, infinity. So in looking at the data, we saw that it had been some time since we had made a president's award. And so as a group, we decided that it might be appropriate to give two awards this year. Um, so this year is especially special because four presidents deliberated. Jack Seitz, who's past, past president. Paul Lewis, who's giving the lecture tonight, who's past president myself, Ann Yoder, acting president, and Luke Harmon, who is our president-elect. Um, so we decided, as you've just heard, that we're going to give two awards. And drum roll, the SSB Council voted unanimously to augment the honorary with some monetary in the form of up to a $2,000 travel award for attendance to the conferring meeting, effective immediately and for perpetuity or until such time another council decides otherwise. So who are these two awardees? Um, well, I'm sure that all that are gathered here will agree that our two awardees have made profound, transformative, and enduring contr uh, contributions to our field and wonderfully, as one of them observed when the awards were announced to them, the recipients form a monophyletic group. <laughs> Together, they have been master tool builders providing the community with indispensable programs such as McClade, which I <laughs> still miss, you guys. <laughs> Bring it back. Um, Mesquite, which we all use, of course and as well as the community empowering Tree of Life web project. Also jointly and independently, they have made tremendous and almost innumerable contributions to phylogenetic theory and empirical biology, including, but certainly not limited to, gene tree, species tree, discordance issues, proper outgroup assignment and phylogenetic analysis, various insights into the evolution of jumping spiders, beetles, and humans, and a lot of things in between. And I think the applicable word here is polymath for both. Um, so it is my distinct honor to present the two SSB President's Awards to Wayne Madison and David Madison. And you actually get... Okay, so um, we're going to flip a coin to see who talks first. Uh, heads, you talk first. Is that okay? Uh, heads, yeah, fine. I trust him. Heads, heads. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it, that this society among all is talking about infinite time and until otherwise. It's uh, the sense of perpetuity is important for this. Um, this award is a tremendous honor for me uh, for numerous reasons, but probably the most important to me is that this I consider uh, one of my two home societies. I identify as a systematist and I've been connected to this society for four decades. And so this is an award for me from my community and hence uh, it's deeply touching. And I feel incredibly honored as well by the award, especially so when I look at the illustrious past winners and all the people out in this, room, in this room, all fantastic people, and I look in the pages of systematic biology and see the brilliant work that's done. I should also note that I'm actually rather proud of the fact that three of the six presidential winners are members of the group of Davids doing systematics. <laughs> okay, so Anne, asked that we say a few words. 
And so Wayne and I reflected back on our history and uh, have a few things that we'd like to say. So Wayne and I feel incredibly So Wayne and I are each extremely lucky to have built-in collaborators. And these are not just normal collaborators, but these are, we each were similar enough that the bandwidth of our communication connection is extremely high. And so that we very quickly can understand what we're talking about, and that sort of communication really helps with collaboration. But we're also different enough, different in many ways, that we bring to the table different strengths. Here we are, this is 13 or 14 years old. Uh, so I think that that's, I think that that's me in the green and I think that that's brown in the red, in the, uh, Wayne in the brown? I, I think, I seem to remember having that green shirt. So I think I'm the one okay. in the green. Okay, whatever. So, so, so and we're- we come to this, something like this with an old photo, we know we have to go to mom. Yeah, She'll know. mom will know. Uh, so we're looking at some, we're in our grand, grandparents' backyard and we're looking at some arthropod in a little container. Um, here we are much later. So that's, that's me on the left and Wayne on the right. Because I designed the t-shirts, I got to wear the cladistics one, so. Okay, so, uh, and this, the, the collaboration started very young and we're collaborating to this day. The, here we are uh, just before the release of Mesquite 3.0, hacking together. Um, in many ways, during this time, we've also served as each other's mentors. And I want to transition to talk a little bit about mentors in our life. So the deepest and most important mentor is our mother, Louise. And uh, she's been incredibly supportive through all the years. Um, did we want to say anything about, do you want to say what you put in your dedication? Sure. Uh, in my thesis, uh, the dedication was to my father for introducing me to the wonders of nature, to my brother for sharing them with me, and to my mother for letting us keep them in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I got I got to point out here. I'm the one that's on her lap. Look at that pose. <laughs> he's he's just. I think he's looking out at some little little toddler girl there and just looking incredibly cool. Um, so mom, uh, mom has been an amazing mentor. She, she's been a, almost her whole life just been what you would call a housewife. Um, over the last few years, last decade or so, I've had the luxury of taking her on my collecting trips about once a year, these road trips we've done. And during the course of those, I've seen her love of nature, which clearly inspired us, her curiosity, her being an incredible problem solver and an idea generator. Uh, so she had a very, very deep impact on us. Of course, we have, uh, people have mentors all over their lives. Uh, these people that we take inspiration from and, and, and use that inspiration to turn ourselves into better people. Wayne and I each have standard, more standard academic mentors. So mine, the person who had the most impact on me academically was George Ball, University of Alberta. And uh, he is an amazing person. He taught me how to be a scientist. I remember vividly as an early grad student, he was explaining to a bunch of people something about carabids, carabid beetles. I don't remember exactly what it was. But what I do remember is pausing and saying, wait a minute, why did I say that? That's completely false. And then he said the exact opposite and went on. And that was a profound message to me as a student that this business is requires letting go of your ego. It's not about us, it's about being true to the cause um, and just to being deeply honest. He also taught me how to be a better person and a better mentor. When I was 16 years old, before I'd ever met him, I very shyly wrote him a letter. He was this famous Beatles systematist across the country. I wrote him this letter, totally not expecting a response. What I got was an eight page long response from him. And so uh, uh, that had a huge impact on me, and I, I think that I'm what I am today in good part because of George. So this is my PhD supervisor, Herbert Levy, and he did not take such an active uh, uh, strategy in terms of mentorship, but what he did do was that he was a role model 
as was George Ball for David, a role model of dedication to the organism, that sense of being true to the cause. Um, Herb also had a way of being permissive to me to find my own path. And I think the best mentors, and the ones that we've talked about are this way, give you the permission to find your own way and to build your own relationship with the subject. Now that might sound like it's simply letting you be self-indulgent, but it's not that, because with each of these mentors, it came, came with an expectation, a responsibility uh, to do it well, informing that relationship with the subject. Well, another way that we've been lucky is that we've found groups of organisms with, uh, uh, in which to fall in love. Uh, David with the beetles uh, and me with the spiders. And this started quite early. David's given hints of this already. And so here's a, uh, a page from David's field notebook when he was probably, he typed it up when he was 15 years old or so. This is the date 72 would be when he was 14. And on the right are two of the earliest drawings that I ever did of spiders when I was 14 years old. So we started really early. And we were so into these things, right? They're beautiful organisms in many ways, and we really fell in love with them. And that love affair and the dedication to the organisms continues to this day. And luckily, we haven't done as many field trips together as we would like, but here was one in Ecuador six years ago. Uh, we continue, as we work, to express our dedication to the organism and how we celebrate their beauty. This. This, this, this falling in love with the organism was important to us, not just to inspire us, it did do that. Many of the theoretical and computational approaches we've developed were done because of inspiration from our organisms. We wanted to do this. We thought, wouldn't this be cool if we could see this with our organisms? So our organisms definitely inspired us in terms of the concepts. But they also did something else, which is that they made us humble. Because as you work and you're dedicated to a group of organisms, you find such complexity there, if you get to know them well, that you can't be very certain of things. And so that humility that was pushed into us by just seeing the irreducible complexity of the organisms in their diversity also expressed itself in our theoretical work and our computational work, because if you think about a lot of our theoretical work, it's basically asking the question, how do you know that? And if you think about our computational work, a lot of it is giving you the tools to look at different ways, uh, to give you different ways, different perspectives on your data, and possibly even questioning what you thought uh, was happening. So for those young people out there, don't be afraid to learn from other people. Don't be afraid to follow your own path, but do it responsibly and do it with humility. And don't be afraid to fall in love with your organisms. So the last thing we'd like to say is, so we're lucky in terms of our collaboration, we're lucky in terms of mentorship, and we're lucky in terms of falling in love with our organisms. But everybody in this room is lucky. I think just, I think we should all feel unbelievably lucky to work on something, to study something as awe-inspiring as the 3.5 billion year old tree of life. So, that's it. Thank, thank you, Anne. Yeah, let's bring the house down for these guys. <laughs>